In this third video of Masking Basics in Affinity, we'll take a look at Live Layer Masks. Live Layer Masks are non-destructive, dynamic masks that update automatically as the image or the underlaying layers change. This means that the mask is based on rules and not brush strokes or shapes. The rules can be applied to hue, luminosity and frequency. With a live layer mask, you are not masking pixels manually, but you're defining the criteria. The key advantage is that live masks automatically update when the image changes. They continuously re-evaluate color, brightness or detail and stay accurate no matter how the image changes. To add a live layer mask, we can use the pixel menu. Under new mask layer, live mask layer, we can find the three variants. A quicker way to add them is using the Layers panel. Click with the Alt or Option key on the mask icon to open up the pop-up menu from which you can choose the live mask you want. So we got three live layer masks. Let's start with the Hue Range Mask. Think this as an HSL adjustment, but instead of changing the color, you get a mask isolating the selected color range. You select the Hue Range on the color wheel, Adjust the tolerance and optionally change the tolerance profile. Finally, you can also blur the area selected for a smoother mask. By using the preview checkbox, you are able to see what has been selected. With the invert output, you basically invert the mask or in other words, select everything except the specified hue range. Hue masks are ideal for isolating skies, skin tones or specific colors for targeted adjustments. Let's use this photo to demonstrate the power of a hue range mask. We can add a levels adjustment and darken the image. If you want this effect to only apply to the sky, we can add a hue range adjustment by Alt or Option clicking on the mask icon in the layers panel. Using the hue selector, we can now target the blues. As we target the blues, notice how the sky is now only affected by the levels adjustment. By turning on the preview checkbox, we get a black and white preview of the actual mask. This can help you clearly see what you are targeting and help with the fine tuning. For a smoother blend, we can increase the blur radius. If we wanted to target the dog and not the sky, the invert option can be turned on and with the preview now turned on, we can clearly see that. For finer control on the tolerance, we can adjust the in and out tolerance curves. As mentioned, these masks are live and are not baked after you set the mask options. For example, if I would add an HSL adjustment below our levels adjustment and change the color of the sky to let's say green, the live mask will adapt and because there is no longer blue, the levels adjustment will have no effect, which you can easily notice when I turn it on and off. Next we have the luminosity range mask. Similar to the hue range mask, but instead of color, the luminosity range mask works on brightness values, which in other words are the shadows, midtones and highlights. By adjusting the tonal graph, we can define which luminance range will be included in the mask. Just like a hue range mask, we can soften it by applying a blur. The option to invert is also available, with the option to use a linear graph. The luminosity range mask is very comparable with the blend ranges. Luminosity range masks are perfect for highlight or shadow only adjustments. For example, in this image, let's make the image warmer by adding a recolor adjustment and set the color to a warm orange color. As you can see, the recolor adjustment targets the whole image. But if we now add a luminosity range mask and then target the highlights, the recolor will only be applied to the highlights, creating this warm look we are looking for. If I add a brightness adjustment below the recolor and increase the brightness and then go back to the luminosity range preview, we can see that because this is a live mask, more areas are now affected. When I turn on the brightness and contrast, we can see the live mask in action more clearly. The last live mask is the band pass mask. The mask calculations are based on image frequency, or in other words, the detail in an image, rather than color and brightness. 
By using this mask, you are able to isolate the edges and textures within a chosen frequency range by adjusting the intensity map curve together with the low and high band sliders, which will become more visible when we turn on the preview. Just as the other two live masks, we have the option to invert and blur the calculated mask. By the way, for each of these live masks, you can save your configuration by using the preset option in the dialogs. I don't use this filter too much, but it's commonly used for sharpening effects or texture based effects without affecting the smooth areas. For example, in this image, if we wanted to recolor the grid without affecting the background color, we could add a recolor adjustment and then use the live band pass filter to only target the grid as this has a higher frequency. Especially for this reason, the band pass filter can also be used when trying to remove more artifacts. This wraps our tutorial for today and I hope you learned something new today. In the next episode, we'll take a look at using clipping for masking, so make sure to subscribe if you want to get notified. Thanks again for tuning in and hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and see you in the next video.